On this episode of Two and a Half Geeks, we're live in Las Vegas and seeing Radeon Red. Next. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Two and a Half Geeks for Hot Hardware. I'm here in Vegas. I'm joined by Wendell Wilson of Level One Tech. Hello. Um, I think we're going to have another guest coming through here in a minute as soon as he finishes the panel. And we are, of course, joined as ever by Marco Chiapetta, who is back home, but I'm sure has lots of burning questions to help add into the conversation. So. <laughs> We know you're not really here for us. What you want to see is the new GPU, the Radeon RX 7900 XTX right here Ooh, in the flesh. he's got it in hand. Yes. Nice. We can, from all angles. Yeah, I think I think Wendell's going to help zoom in. So very interesting arrangement on the I.O. because it has the HDMI, two full-size display ports. Oh, getting the focus tuned in. It is showing... The box on the stream but that's fine and a type c connector if uh that's your jam so a little interest there it does have rgb but obviously it's not going to be uh powered up here um so yeah very awesome card there is of course also the rx 7900 xt that launched which is mostly the same gpu but it is cut down by a, a six with um the new chiplet design so we have the gpu itself here as well with the chiplets uh, it's never gonna be. yeah it's not quite going to see but you can see in the middle there is the graphics compute die the gcd and it is flanked by six uh uh memory die the mcds yeah we got new terminology mcd yeah. and gcd so um kind of building on the the ryzen formula of chiplets but a little little bit inverted they are going to move the FCC notice from the back. Yes. To the plate. Right? That's already happened, I guess. Right. So this is, this is a pre-production card, but it's pretty close to what is going to be live. So we do have a very short uh, show today because we both have to catch a flight in like half an hour. So um, <laughs> we want to really quickly get to uh, questions you have. Uh, Dave, I don't know if I know you're in the background. If you want to link the uh, article we put up yesterday with the launch coverage and then... Um, I guess we'll start with Marco. Do you have any questions before we get going too far? I don't so, know how much I, you know, you've been I, I was in, with. Can, can you guys hear me okay? Can you hear me? Um, we can. Okay. So I, I was not privy to the launch, unfortunately. I was sick yesterday. So my understanding is 7900 XTX is the full compute die with six memory compute dies. And 7900 XT, it's it's the same chip, but with one MCD disabled? Or is there also some compute disabled Correct. as well? So uh, it does cut down the compute units from 96 to 80. Um, okay. So it's basically, a, it cuts off a sixth of the GCD as well. But it is, you know, the same GCD. It's just one one uh, set of compute units disabled. So um, we don't know how far that could scale down for future products. But but yes, that is that is the story. So you will see with the XT, even though it has five MCDs, you will still see all six attached um, with one just disabled because of, you know, packaging, stability, all that uh, kind of stuff. But um, so they'll visually look identical, but one of them is yep. disabled. And in terms of the cards, the XTX is two and a half slot and the XT is two slot, just like the 6900 uh, series. So I think the XT is still just over um, two slots. It's it's very close in size. It is a tiny bit smaller, but I don't think it quite slips under the two slots. There is one over there, but I can't show it because it's a very early prototype version that they won't let me show the whole thing on camera. But there is a view of it of what I can show right there on stream. So that's the XT on the right side behind and the XTX in front. Um, so... It also does have the RGB. That one just wasn't powered up for the shot. Um, but yeah. So I wasn't, I didn't get a chance to watch the stream. And obviously I know the briefings, you guys get a lot more info than we get on the streams. So mm -hmm. if I'm asking questions that are under embargo, just tell me to shut up. Now, um, yep. with the with the chiplet arrangement, do you know if the display engines are in the, the graphics compute die or are they you know, outside of the graphics compute? You I want to go for it? I don't think we can answer that yet. Yeah, okay. okay. Um, I, I, we, we will say that the terminology that AMD is using is MCD 
and GCD. So graphics, compute, and memory. So you might infer some things from that. Right. Got it. Um, yeah. I mean, speaking on the media uh, engine side of it, we actually have a demo right behind us showing AV1 encoding um, versus H.264 uh, using OBS. So that is coming. You'll be able to stream and record in AV1 to supported platforms. OBS without any special voodoo, because technically OBS right. worked before, but it required certain voodoo that was not super user friendly. This is actually... I'm blown away by this because it's just been super worked. critical of because it's like why the encoder is there why do you make everybody using o OBS suffer this is not suffering this is actually good yeah and uh, I know it's not going to come through on the stream but just visually so these these are two samples that were recorded um, we have H.264 on the left and AV1 on the right both at 3,500 kilobits a second and just the visual quality difference between the two is dramatic. You've got a lot of blocking and artifacting with the H.264 encode. And, you know, the AV1 stream's not perfect. It could still benefit from more bit rate, of course. But it's significantly clear. And they also are doing a little bit of voodoo with the pre-processing on, on the image. So they've got some AI algorithms that are identifying things like text elements um, in the HUD and stuff and are preserving the detail of those segments better. So when you have a chat feed or a kill feed, you can actually read it. And it's also possible to run both encoders at the same time in yes. this demo, which is really cool. H.264 and 265. So you can capture AV1 for highlights and stream 264. Right. So if oh, you're on cool. a platform that doesn't support the AV1 yet, which I think, is any of I think we have our special guest now. So we'll just have him come and walk <laughs> on this side, one side. So we are now joined. I'm going to disinfect the earbud the best that hey, I can. I'm one? so sorry. Oh, oh, oh boy! Here, but you can hear Marco. <laughs> you can right. just, just pull. Us. I don't know. We're, we're, we're very <laughs> high level. Here. <laughs> Hopefully, they cleaned it first. Oh, good. <laughs> A little bit. It just feels so yeah, dirty. So, you should. Uh, Frank, you're basically in charge of the right. software. Amongst here, many things, yeah, so here. a lot of things. Gaming, um, so the smart streaming. technologies, our adrenaline software, our advantage solutions, and then gaming marketing. Yeah, I'm, I have as many jobs as I have personalities. Yes. So um, I, I think one thing I, I wanted to see if we could ask a little more about is your is the AMD Advantage program, um, and, and what that means for desktops in particular. Um, so on stage, I know you mentioned that there's the partners for the program that will have their systems you can just buy and create. But obviously, we're the enthusiasts. We want to build our own systems. So what does the Advantage program mean for DIY enthusiasts, if anything? So oftentimes, we do these launches, for example, right, of these new graphics cards, these new CPUs. And people want to know, like, how do I replicate that performance at home? Or how do I get that exact same experience? And that's what we're trying to do with Advantage, amongst many other things, is to give you the blueprint for here is the combination. Here's everything you need to get the maximum performance, the maximum efficiency out of your Ryzen and Radeon powered system. So, you know, the, the hardware configuration of Advantage, it's, it's public information. It's not something that's secret or anything. Um, so you can replicate the hardware configuration for these Advantage solutions and get the kind of numbers that you see us uh, posting, for example, on, on these when we launch these cards and we launch these CPUs. Um, beyond the hardware, though, the complexity nowadays of uh, getting that type of efficiency and performance it's, it's increased over time because we have a lot of platform technologies now that um, really optimize Ryzen and Radeon working best together. Uh, we brand those as our smart technologies, for example. So, you know, that's the part that I think we need to do a better job of communicating how to turn on all those settings, all those features, so that you're, you can go beyond just the hardware combination and you can actually turn all those things on as well. For example, if uh, you want to take advantage of smart access memory, which is a feature that can give you between 5 to even 15% more performance in a Ryzen and a Radeon-based system, um, you're not going to just get that if you don't go into your BIOS, turn on rebar, and then go into your adrenaline software and turn on the smart access memory feature. Uh, the advantage of, pun intended, the advantage of buying an advantage system is all that work is done for you. But as a DIYer, um, we're gonna we're gonna go figure out how we can just kind of maybe put out some uh, communication that helps walk people through all these software steps 
uh, in order for them to, to try and replicate that experience. So in terms of the, the one click, you know, experience, you turn it on and it works with the advantage solutions. With the DIY system, you can get all the parts put it together, but there's still some legwork you need to do. Yeah, and that's the biggest you know value proposition that buying the pre-built uh, system offers you is that it's turnkey. It's it's all done it for just you. Works. It just works. It's all done for you. But we our goal is not to reserve any type of performance or anything that only advantage systems have. That's not at all our intent. Um, it's really to work with the system integrators and the OEMs to help them develop these turnkey solutions to take full advantage of everything we have to offer. So what we got to do is we have to educate the DIY community as to how they can do the same for themselves at home. Do you think we could see a one click in the adrenaline software that configures it all to advantage standards? It's not that simple, unfortunately. Maybe we can do some stuff. I got to go think about that. But um, there's a lot of BIOS stuff, too. Like making okay. sure you're using the latest BIOS for your motherboard. We work with the motherboard companies as well to make sure that they're turning on all the features and that they're optimizing everything. Um, and it's why you see, like, when you turn on smart access memory in an AMD based system, you see so much more performance than you do uh, in a competitor's uh, system when they turn on rebar alone, for example. It's because those are the optimizations that are in the BIOS and in the software and in the whole platform from CPU across to GPU that give you those benefits. So, it's complicated, and that's why we're doing what we're doing with the SI partners. Now what we need to think about is how do we extend that to the DIY community? And we're taking that feedback back, and we're going to we'll come back with some solutions. All right. So real quick, uh, Marco, are there any questions in the chat we can cover? Because we are on a very compressed uh, time schedule because we've both got to catch plane in a couple of minutes. Oh. Yeah, so uh, we, we did get a question on the memory that actually I had a question, the same question myself. There's 16 megs per MCD for a total of 96 megabytes on a fully configured 7900 XT. TX. Is that seen by the GPU as a single pool of cache memory? I'm pretty sure it is. I believe okay. so, yeah. And then on the XT, you have, I believe, 80. Right, so it's cut down by the yeah. six. Yeah. Got it. Cool. Um, and the, and, and I guess the, the utilized... Yeah, ahead, you might notice that there is less infinity cache um, on the RDNA 3 versus RDNA 2. I think it was 128 meg, um, some, somewhere in that ballpark. I've been so focused so on RDNA 3 for the last year. That yeah. <laughs> sure. 90, so, 96 meg versus 128 meg. So it is less infinity yeah. cache, but much higher bandwidth. So they did yeah. boost a lot of the lower level caches, L0, L1, L2. Um, which is much more important, as well, at least as they were explaining, for ray tracing type workloads and, and, and some other things. So you are still getting bullshit cache closer to the compute, but the, the Infinity cache, they've also done some changes with the um, decision trees, algorithms, whatever, um, to optimize the hit rate. So they're claiming, at least, and you know, your guys claim that the hit rate is still similar with the 96 megs of cache versus the 128 on the RDNA. I'm learning so much here from Chris. This is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and also keep in mind, you have a higher overall memory, right? So you got 20 gigs and 24 gigabytes. Um, and then the, the speed, the interconnect speed between the memory and, uh, and the GCD is best in class. I mean, it's the fastest in the entire industry. So it, it, there's a lot more just overall speed in this architecture that is, is delivering the kind of results that you're yeah, seeing. Yeah, that cache uplift they haven't really disclosed the voodoo magic behind how it was done yet. So we can't really talk about that yet, but I'm sure that information will be coming. Um, I do see a question on the screen. The AIB cards will be out on December 13th or sometime later. I believe that was answered in the Q&A. So I can say that uh, there is plans for AIB cards to be available at that December 13th. That's one. certainly the goal. Um, of course, every AIB things, has their bring up happen. challenges and, and logistics and so on. But uh, our, our embargoes and everything are timed around that. Yes, that's the goal. Um, so, and I think can, there was also I ask a question above about overclocking. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I was going to ask a question on pricing. It's it's in line with the question that my, Mike Brazone asked in the chat. You've got a, you know GPUs now, the the first of their kind, using advanced packaging technology, with you know twenty four gigs on the top end card. Yet you were able to keep pricing the same. Uh, is this? Can you just give some some insight into how you guys decided on pricing relative to the competition and the market in general? Look, you know, when we say that this is the most advanced GPU architecture in the industry and the most advanced graphics card, that's what you're seeing. Okay, what does it mean? Like, we could have built a monolithic die that was 
faster and more expensive. And our competitors have chosen to go down that path. We chose to go down a more advanced path, a more sophisticated path by taking the technology that we've leveraged in Ryzen now to give us a leadership position that we have on the CPU side, and that's the chiplet architecture, and bring that over to the graphics side. There are performance benefits and there's efficiency benefits in doing that. And that efficiency translates to the entire graphics card end to end. And what you're seeing with the pricing is us taking those efficiencies to market for the benefit of our customers. I mean, quite honestly, we, I would say we made the smarter decisions and those smarter decisions have translated to the performance that we're delivering at the price point that we're able to deliver it at. Um, and everybody's benefiting from that, especially the market, especially customers. Um, so it's just a decision that really is the result of the decisions we made three and four years ago when we were initially defining RDNA 3 and, and this graphics card stack. Nice. Very cool. Now, I know we can't, we're not talking specific performance numbers or anything like that just yet, but in terms of, of experience versus, say, your previous gen, so 6900 XT moving up to 7900 XTX or 6950 XT versus 7900 XTX, um, obviously, it's going to be higher performance. You guys are saying 54% improvement in perf per watt, but what about the overall experiences? Are, are the cards quieter? Do they run cooler? Is there anything that you can disclose uh, around the overall experience with the cards? It's 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 negligible, honestly, Marco. I mean, it's what twenty watts more of TDP. I think the entire card. Um, when you think about it, we're adding yeah. a lot more memory. Three thirty-five. Yeah, it's three thirty-five versus three fifty-five, right? And you have the increased memory, so you know they. They're, it's kind of negligible. I mean, they're all within the same ballpark. Um, Noise-wise, we didn't you know, violate our noise uh, guidelines. You know, these things are within the same noise levels. The, the, at least the cards that we're making are within the same noise levels as the previous generation. Um, our, our, our team's goal, our product management team's goal with these graphics cards was to preserve the experience and give you the most advanced and high performance uh, platform and architecture we possibly can. We set these bounds because we want it to be easy to upgrade your system. We don't want you to have to um, buy a new chassis, have to change out your power supply. Like a lot of partners are coming to us and they're thanking us because they can actually put these cards inside their small form factors and in their ITX chassis and they can't put the competitors cards in there anymore. So you're gonna see that small form factor systems now moving forward, the fastest configurations of them are gonna be powered by Radeon quite simply because you can't fit the other competitor card inside those chassis. So they've actually designed themselves out of a large number of systems that are out there and a lot of, or a large number of customers installations because you know maybe they have an 850 watt power supply or a 750 watt and um, they, they just, they don't wanna to have to deal with all the upgrade costs that come associated with being able to accommodate a card that already costs $500 more. So yeah, it's a very, we think, you know, we've made a lot of really good decisions here and everyone's going to benefit from it. Yeah. So. So yeah. uh, Kevin Prewell's asking any, any, any performance different. I, it, it should be similar, but I'm just going to ask because Kevin's a friend of ours. Um, will the 7900 benchmark about the same on AMD or Intel platforms? Any special magic on AMD platforms that might boost performance? Yeah, on AMD, you get smart access memory um, and you're going to be able to get smart access video, which is our uh, you know, video compression technology that makes use of the video compression on the CPU or the APU, I should say, and the DGPU. You don't get smart access memory if you change the CPU out to Intel. You can still take advantage of rebar, but there are pretty considerable uh, performance differences between rebar and smart access memory that are very well published out there. Um, so you will miss out on that ma major benefit. So you'd have to hope that, you know, that this, the, the gaming performance of the, uh, of the Intel processor would more than offset that time will tell, we'll see what happens, but I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't count on that being predominant. And uh, you guys disclosed uh, base clocks, I believe, um, for the 7900 XTX and 7900 XT. Can you talk on overclocking at all? Um, are we going to see more flexible overclocking with the, the graphics compute die separated from the memory compute? Um, is there any sort of nuance with overclocking? Can you even overclock with this new setup? Anything you can uh, say in that regard? There's a good amount of headroom in the card, in the GPU, <laughs> okay. I should say, sorry. There's a good amount of headroom in the GPU 
and we are very excited about the AIB designs that you're going to see. Um, all the overclocking features in Adrenaline, they're going to be preserved in there. There's still Rage Mode, for example, in there. Um, you'll have the automated uh, options that make it really simple for you to overclock the card, and you'll have more manual and advanced tuning options in there as well. But there's a good amount of headroom. Um, I mean, what you should think of is the cards we showed yesterday are like the least common denominator. You're only going to see higher performing, higher clocked um, uh, cards coming out now uh, or being announced as, we, as the AIBs start to approach their announcement dates. And I hate to do it, but we are right up on time where I'm going to miss my flight. Yeah, for so, Chris needs to get on a flight. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, very informative Thanks as ever. And hopefully we can get you back on a stream quick and we can cover a I'm lot always, more information. I'm always game for a stream with um, you guys. So. Yeah, just the way scheduling works out with live events. We just don't have the slot today. But um, yeah, thank you for having us out here. Thank you, Wendell, for assisting with the uh, with the, the cast. And um, <laughs> Hey, Marco, good to see you, my friend. Thank yeah, you for making some time. Good seeing you, Frank. So no, my pleasure. Thanks, for, out, thanks for all the support. All right. So with that, we're going to say goodbye to Chris and Frank. And if you have any questions, leave them in the chat. I'm sure we'll get Frank on again at some point and we'll get everything answered either through the articles or in the next stream. And with that, we'll bid you adieu. Thanks for hanging out with us.